Hello everyone. I hope you are all doing well. Today I want to invite you to afternoon tea. On the menu are some dainty tea sandwiches, which I'm going to make with pan de mie. Now pan de mie is a French sandwich bread. It has a perfectly rectangular shape and that shape comes from a pan de mie pan which today is known as a Pullman pan. So it has this lid that stops the loaf from forming a crown. And that's why it's great for tea sandwiches. You can cut it into perfect squares or little rectangles. Pan de mie is actually fun to make and you can mix and knead the dough entirely by hand or you can use a standing mixer, as I'm doing today, and you want to outfit the mixer with the dough hook. So what I have here is 650 grams of all-purpose flour. You could use bread flour if you like, and you do want to weigh the flour. Then add seven grams or two and a quarter teaspoons of active dry yeast that has been dissolved in a quarter cup of warm water. Then add 400 mils or one and two thirds cups of milk. And you want to scald the milk first and then let it cool to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit or 40 degrees Celsius. Scalding the milk kills off the enzymes that can stop the dough from rising fully. Then add two and a half teaspoons of salt. Bread without salt has no flavor at all. I'm going to mix this dough at low speed for about 10 seconds. Just want to moisten the flour. Then increase the speed to medium until the dough masses on the blade. That's going to take only two minutes. And there we are. Now let the dough rest for two minutes. All right, the two minute rest is up. So now I'm going to knead the dough for another two minutes. And while the dough is kneading, I'm going to prepare some butter. So this is six tablespoons or 85 grams of unsalted butter. You want the butter to be cold but malleable. And to make cold butter malleable, what you do is mash it with a rolling pin. Scrape off any butter that sticks to your rolling pin. And then use the heel of your hand to further mash the butter. See, it's still cold, but it's becoming flexible. I imagine this is the texture of butter that people use when they make butter sculptures. And the reason we're doing this is so that the butter will incorporate easily into the dough without making the dough greasy. So you don't want the butter at room temperature and you absolutely don't want to melt the butter. So now I'm going to add the butter bit by bit to the bread dough. And you just add teeny tiny pieces. Yeah, pan de mie is a buttery dough. And the milk that we added gives the bread a soft texture. If the butter sticks to the sides of your bowl, don't worry. Just let the mixer keep running and eventually the butter will become incorporated. All of my butter is now incorporated. So I'm going to continue kneading the dough for another five minutes or until the dough becomes smooth and elastic. All right, we are fully kneaded here. So the dough should be smooth and elastic and just a tiny bit sticky. And if your dough is soupy, go ahead and add a tablespoon of flour while you're kneading. And then scrape the dough onto a work surface using my marble board here 
and you do not want to add any additional flour at this point. And then form the dough into a ball. So it's only a little bit sticky. And then put the dough in a greased bowl and then flip the dough to grease the other side and then cover it either with a sheet of cling film or with a damp towel. I'm using a damp towel. And then put this in a warm location until the dough doubles in volume. That's going to take about two hours. All right, our dough has definitely doubled in volume. So now I'm going to drop it onto my work surface, which again is not floured. Out you go. So now pat this out. And once again, form it into a ball. And then put it back in the bowl. Flip. Cover. And once again, put it in a warm location until it doubles in volume. This will only take about one hour. Second rise is complete. So once again, punch down the dough. Drop it onto the work surface. Now we're going to form the dough and put it in our bread pan. So now pat out the dough. Once again, removing any air bubbles. And then set the pan near the dough. And you want to pat out the dough so it extends to pretty much the length of the bread pan. This is a 13 inch long bread pan. And I will link this pan in the description below. Okay, then pull up the top two edges of the dough to make Mickey Mouse ears. Fold them over. And then we have this point here. Start rolling the dough from the point and then push in with your thumbs. So roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. We're building surface tension here. Roll, push, roll, push, roll, push, roll, push. And when you get to the end, karate chop. And then if you have any seam, pinch to seal the seam. Let's see, are we at the correct length? Yes, we are. And then put the dough in the pan. Now, this is a non-stick pan. You can grease it if you like, but I'm not going to. Just pack it in there. And then cover the pan with the damp towel or some cling film and let the bread rise to from one inch to a half inch from the rim of the pan. That's going to take 30 to 45 minutes. Also, preheat the oven to 435 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 224 degrees Celsius. 435 degrees Fahrenheit may sound like an odd oven temperature, but I once watched Julia Child make pan to me, and that is the temperature at which she baked her bread. Let's have a look. All right. The dough has risen almost to the rim of the pan. So now slide the lid. Let's see if I can remember how to do this. Slide the lid on top. and then into the oven it goes. And we are going to bake this for 40 minutes. Our beautiful pan de mie. This is also called French sandwich bread or Pullman bread.
I'm going to let this cool to room temperature on a wire rack. I did not have time to make the tea sandwiches yesterday because it was getting kind of late. So it's the next day and I'm getting ready to make the tea sandwiches. And the first thing I'm going to do is slice up this pan to me. I'm going to try to make really thin slices. Look at the crumb on this. The crumb means the interior texture. So this bread has what's called a close crumb, meaning there are no big holes in the bread. You don't want holes for tea sandwiches, okay? Now I'm going to tuck these slices between layers of a damp kitchen towel just so the bread doesn't dry out. I'm going to make two kinds of tea sandwiches. The first one is from my cookbook, Kevin's Kitchen, and it is this avocado and shrimp sandwich with one little variation. I could not find baby shrimp at my local supermarket, so I bought a six ounce tin of crab meat. So you start with an avocado. This is a Haas avocado. Use a spoon to remove the avocado flesh from the avocado skin. Then puree the avocado with a potato masher. If your avocado is ripe, it will puree very easily. Add a pinch of salt and some grinds of black pepper. And about one tablespoon of freshly squeezed lemon. The acid in the lemon will stop the avocado from oxidizing. Has a beautiful pale green color. Then add a couple of drops of hot sauce. Stir that in. Take two slices of bread and then to stop the filling from being able to seep through the bread you want to seal it with either butter or cream cheese. I'm using softened cream cheese here. You want to apply just a thin layer to each slice of bread. Add a dollop of the avocado mixture to one slice of bread and then spread it out all the way to the edge or very close to the edge. Then add a layer of either the baby shrimp or the crab meat. Close the sandwich and press it down gently. Now I know some people like to first remove the crust from the bread and then fill the sandwich. I do the opposite. This way your sandwich will have a clean edge. Nothing goes to waste here because I eat the trimmings. They're delicious. And here's the great thing about the rectangular loaf of pandemi. You have a perfect square here, so you can cut this into four triangles or you could cut it into three rectangles. The rectangles are called fingers. I think I'm going to do this one as... I'll do four triangles. You want to wipe your knife in between each cut. And there you have it. Four very pretty, very dainty tea sandwiches. And I'm going to put these on a platter for now. And then cover them with a damp towel while I continue making some additional sandwiches with the avocado filling.
I'm going to cut this avocado sandwich into three fingers or rectangles. Next, we're going to make some black forest ham and provolone cheese sandwiches, and I'm going to cut them into rounds. Here's my bread. See, I should be able to make two rounds from each slice of bread. And I'm going to seal these with butter. Again, you could use cream cheese if you like. I'm going to put my bread on this plastic cutting board. And then I'm going to cut out two rounds. There's one and two. And do the same thing for the other slice of bread. Now take some of the black forest ham. I'm going to use three slices here and cut it into rounds using the same biscuit cutter. And do the same with the provolone. You could use one, two, or even three slices of provolone. If you've ever wondered why tea sandwiches are so expensive at tea houses, well, now you know. They take a bit of work. To assemble the sandwiches, you simply put the provolone cheese rounds on the black forest ham rounds. Put that on a round of bread and close it with another round of bread. I think these are very pretty. It's tea time. I will meet you in the music room. Thank you for joining me for afternoon tea. Let me just go over what I have on this three-tiered stand. So I have the savory sandwiches that we made earlier, and I have scones that I made for a previous video. I froze them and just thawed them out, and I'm serving the scones with blueberry preserves and whipped cream. And for dessert, I'm having the chocolate mayonnaise cake that we made two weeks ago in a video. I froze the leftover cake and I topped the cake with little rounds of strawberry. So this tea was very easy to put together. This is the avocado and crab sandwich. Very delicious. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I really hope that you will give that pandemi bread recipe a try someday. It really is the aristocrat of breads, and it is traditional for tea sandwiches. Again, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate your company. Take good care of yourself, and I will see you in next week's video.